longest night. So if this is my security blanket, I kind of know the lines, but I just want to have this <laughs> in my hands. Just in case. Um, and uh, I wrote up top here, I need a director. That's That was the one thing Michael was like, what should I say? I was like, well, I need a director. And you'll know why as I do this. <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. um, and uh, yeah, so the, the show has evolved, and this, this is how it would open, perhaps. So I thought it would be cool to do a show about my life as a creative artist disguised as an IT consultant. You know, I tell my story from job to job, you know. Um, but there's, there's really no climax, there's no resolution. I don't know how it ends. And I mean, you know, stories and storytellers, they're big now, you know, the moth. I mean, everyone says, oh, you gotta do the moth, the moth. I mean, we all want a story, you know. Stories, drama, you know, the inciting incident, and conflict, hero, antagonist, climax, they do not. You know, it's like life, right? You know, life is like a story, beginning, middle, and end. You know, the beginning is birth, and the middle, the middle is you know, hours and hours and years and years and years and years. But uh, you know, backstory and uh, plot lines don't really go together. And then, and then the climax, death. Oh. <laughs> so, anyway, but like, like, maybe life isn't really a story. But you know, stories are the perfect antidote to life. You know, books, movies, plays—they construct, they form, they're much shorter. <laughs> And they help us make sense of the world. You know, like we have our creation myths, you know, where we came from, why we're here. And we have, uh, you know, slicing up history into struggles and triumphs, wars and, and uh, discoveries. And we have our possible endings, the apocalypse, rapture, zombies, aliens. Mm -hmm. You know, it helps us process the inevitable without knowing when or how it will end. And there's so much of that now, but you know what? Back then, there were pr predictions and prophecies hundreds of years ago, a thousand years ago in the Dark Ages. The end was near. This is just as near, just as inevitable. <laughs> but is it inevitable? I mean, maybe we're conjuring up these endings to fit the story structure so that it you know, makes for a big final scene. Who knows? Could be some other scenario. Let, let, let's say, uh, let's say 500, 3,000 3, years from now, okay? We're still here, we're still going on. Surviving and thriving. Yeah, we got the, the jetpack thing. We figured that thing out. <laughs> we got an operating system that everybody agrees on. It works fine. It's free, you know. <laughs> and then we can turn ourselves invisible at will. But, you know, people still die doing stupid things, choking on chicken bones or uh, uh, bungee jumps going wrong. And, and wars are still fought. I mean, they're fought with droids. But, you know, we so dearly love our robots. And it really breaks our, our heart when they get destroyed. And there's so many things still wrong. Like now the Pacific is just one big plastic sheet, you know, we can mm. drive over it. <laughs> you know, and, and uh, through some kind of fucked up gene splicing thing, trees have now uprooted themselves and they're just walking around stomping on people and cars. And, and, and there's some kind of weird fatal disease that's transmitted by eye contact. So oh, no one can <laughs> and, and, we're, and there's going to be prophecies that there's going to be people saying, that's it, we're doomed. I mean, look what we did to the trees. They're walking around and we, we can't drive on the Pacific Ocean anymore because the road waves are breaking through the plastic. And the eye disease, it's going to kill us all. I mean, really, if that's, if that's what's going to happen, I mean, if that's how it is forever, I mean, I have a feeling, you know, come on. It's still like that three, 4,000 years from now. Everyone, it's still fucked up. Everyone at some point is just going to say, you know what? Fuck it! <laughs> it's just one universal consciousness of mass suicide. Everybody all at once says, <laughs> we're drinking the cool. Yeah. <laughs> right? Now, how's that for an ending? <laughs> so you can imagine, if I'm thinking of endings like that, doing my little show about my life as a creative artist disguised as an IT consultant could be problematic. <laughs> but I still want to tell the story. You know, it's a story about how I became, how I found out who I am while being something I'm not. So let me set the scene. Let's go back in time a little bit. Okay, so I'm the lead information architect in a packed conference room of a dot com design and development shop called Kamikaze Clam, working on a project called Persurance. <laughs> that will be one of the classic all things to all people internet applications. It will buy insurance, it will sell insurance, it will insure everything and become the hub of all things insurable. And I'm up at the whiteboard leading this meeting and I'm diagramming this ridiculously complex system with origin 
blue lines and red and green boxes represent screens and processes, and it looks like Mondrian's Broadway Boogie Woogie on it. <laughs> and we've got business analysts, we've got insurance executives, user interface designers, HTML developers, and other information architects who, though full-time employees, are junior to me. And I'm a hired gun brought in to wrestle this project to the ground and bring it on home. What am I doing here? How did I get here? And I look out the window of this conference room to the Soho skyline of rooftops and water towers, and there's a film crew on the building across the street. And there's me with a headset on with the film crew. <laughs> and there's a camera on a crane on that roof. And then from the roof, I yell, action. And then we see the camera's POV as it pans the skyline, and then it swoops up to these lead pane windows, and it comes by the conference room. And there's me, actually Seth Rogen playing me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and then we, come, we get it out, we get an establishment shot inside the conference room in this, uh, the whole room, and then we get a two shot of those uh, dot com guys over there. They look like they can't wait to go out and get wasted. And then let's get a shot of these insurance executives. They look completely lost. They say, hey, come around, we get over here, we gotta get a shot of this kid doodling. What is he doodling? It's like an anime dinosaur with go-go boots and a lightsaber. <laughs> and, then, and then we pan around to me. And it's not Seth Rogen playing me, it's me. But I'm, I'm in a, the lighting's completely different. I'm in a theater. I'm in a theater, this black box theater, and there's, you know, uh, there's a little bar over there, and there's someone <laughs> with glasses on and a little basket with raffle tickets, and <laughs> one with a green turban on, and then and people are looking at each other, is this kid photographed? And I sign a release to me. Exactly what's going on. <laughs> and behind me, there's this huge whiteboard. And on the whiteboard, there's sketches of that scene in the conference room with shots and, 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 uh, and camera positions. And in the sketches, there's this little dry erase whiteboard and stick figure of me, or Seth Rogen playing me, or just some dry erase whiteboard guy. <laughs> and, and some upbeat music plays, you know, some kind of simple melody you hear on those commercials that have that animated whiteboard sketch thing. <laughs> and the dry erase whiteboard guy jumps, like he realizes, holy shit, I'm animated dry erase whiteboard guy. I'm alive. And he jumps up and he leaves the conference room on this sketch on the whiteboard and he's running. He's running past long whiteboard sketches of hallways and, and, and workspaces and row after row of cubes. And he's running that sort of animated run where his legs are moving, but it's really the background that's moving, the illusion of running, you know? And then, then Hanneke it turns a corner down a hallway and then it comes into this huge kind of uh, Flow chart, kind of a Rube Goldberg kind of contraption thing that he, he comes in and goes through and comes out and he comes to the bottom. And he comes to the bottom. And there's there's blue, blue water. And then the lighting changes and the sound of water trickles in. And, and you hear water trickling and there's a little bass line. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, if you're ever stuck in the wilderness, you're lost. And you've got to survive. You've got to figure out some way to save yourself. What do you do? You go down. You follow water. Follow water down. Follow the creek. Follow the river. And eventually, you'll get help. You'll come to the place where people have gathered. And that's what, that's how you go down. You go down. The wind day the wind day day I see the world is turning it's turning in my head I see the world is spinning spinning out of control you know Gotta get down, down to the water, wanna feel it in my bones. I gotta get down, down to the river, wanna feel it in my soul. I'm going down, down. I'm going down, I'm going down, down, going down. I get down to the river. I get down to the banks, empty my pockets, take off my clothes, and I'm walking on bare feet. Take me where you need to, or take me far from here. Wherever I go, I just want to know what it feels to be free. I want to know what it feels to be free. I want to know what it feels.